What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Comment Writers. We're here. We're going to talk about both Common Rider Gotchard episode ten and Common Rider Gotchard versus Legend Rider episode one. Lots to talk about today. But first up, I'm your host Josh Meek, the Uber Geek, and I'm joined as always by my good friend Toby Tobes. Hi, Toby. How's it going? <laughs> Josh, let me tell you about the stupidest thing ever called Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart is pretty dumb. You're right. I agree. Uh, and it only gets more dumb around this time of year. <laughs> but yeah. what, what what specifically is irking you about the Mart of Wall tonight? So the time was 640. Pulled into the Walmart <laughs> parking lot and we said, hey, we have a mobile order to pick up. We should probably, you know, do the thing outside. So we went shopping at Walmart first, and I said, while we're inside and paying for things, what if we just walk to customer service and tell customer service, hey, you know, we have a, a mobile pickup thing, but we're, we're inside. We'll, we'll take it outside for you. No big deal. Uh, the so kid you've says, confused them right off the bat. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So the kid says, uh, uh, we, can't, uh, we can't do it that way. Uh, you need to go in one of those parking spots outside. And Amazing. Amazing. Go in the app and check in with, the, with your proper spot number. And then we can come bring your stuff out. So I start catching a vibe already. I'm like, fine, whatever. So there's a bunch of signs outside that say pick up area this way with arrows pointing to a certain spot of the parking lot. I follow the arrows. I say, this has to be the way to go. We go and sit in the spot. We open the app. We say, hey, you know, we're going to put in our parking, num- our parking spot number to, you know, get, get our stuff while we're out here. And we look and there's like three people in cars just sitting and staring looking a little spaced out or like okay whatever this is probably not the best idea but you know let's see what happens here so we open the app and the app is like what what number of spot are you in one through 14 and we're in spot 95 <laughs> so i'm like okay so the app's a piece of shit these are the spots they pointed out everything says oh black friday early deals park over here uh it says pick up and delivery parking only so like okay so sat there for 10 minutes Said, well, there's no real number. I don't really like this. Uh, we said, maybe there's different numbers on the other side of the parking lot. So we go to the other side of the parking lot. It's now probably 6.55 at this point. So we've waited 15 minutes already yeah, for two storage it- totes. For two storage totes. We're going to start there. Okay, two I was storage say, totes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a full grocery order. Like, well, okay, it's storage totes. So yeah, if you're sitting out in the parking lot and you haven't checked into a spot, it's like you don't exist. That time was just pure waste at that point. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's on that's on you, is what I'm no, saying. No, but I thought we were in a spot, but we weren't in the right tier of spots. But you hadn't checked in in the app. That's how you, that's how you know. No, but we did. Like the numbers were listed from ninety to like hundred, basically. So what 90 number to did you put in? I put in five because. <laughs> okay. Because the, the only because no because all the nines were the common number, and there was ninety one through ninety five. So okay. we we're in ninety five. So my logic was all the nines are even. I'll just put the five in. This makes okay. sense to me. I'll buy that. Whatever. I'll buy that. Okay. So 15 minutes. We say, let's check the other side. Pull in the other side. They're numbered normal. One, two, three, four, five, six. We say, ah, oh, shit. I guess we've fucked up these first first 15 minutes. No big deal. We change the spot from five to four in the app. And we go, hey, let's get our stuff. So we're sitting there. And all 12 spots have cars parked in them. People are just sitting in their cars looking irritated. <laughs> the rows outside of these two rows are people sitting in their cars with their lights on just waiting there still. Uh, we sat there for 30 minutes. So now it's 720 at this point. So from 655 to 720, no one came outside to help anybody in any of these cars. Like everyone was there before I pulled in and everyone was still there 30 minutes in when I got pissed off eventually. So now I walk back in the store. I walk up to this like 16 year old kid at customer service I was like, hey, is anyone doing the pickup stuff outside today? And he's like, uh, yeah, there's they're just kind of backed up. And I'm like, I'm not only, not only asking for me. I was like, I've been sitting there for 30 minutes, and there's people who have been there way longer than I have still sitting there. Uh, we're just uh, backed up. And if you come back in, in a, like a certain amount of time, uh, if no one comes to help you, I can page someone for you. So I'm like, fine, I'm not argue with this kid, whatever, walk away. But his measurement of time was come back in some amount of time. Oh, those were his words were some amount of time? Yeah, his literal words were come back in a certain <laughs> amount of time. Perfect. And we That's can just great. page someone up here. So now I'm like, I'm not going to yell at the kid. He doesn't know any better. I walk back out. I'm kind of irritated, but I'm like, at least I bitched now. At least I did my part. 
uh, we're sitting there more. Cars start leaving with no merchandise, and their cars are like jumping right in the numbered spots. So like there's a half rotation, half people slamming doors, looking pissed off in their cars, all sorts of things. <laughs> so we're going through all this, and at some point, like, uh, the my caretaker, we'll call them. <laughs> uh, my caretaker decides that <laughs> I stole that from William Osmond. But my caretaker decides, like, hey, I'm just going to go up to the door and, like, knock on the door and try to get someone to come out. So I see him go Wait, up. knock on – oh, because they have, like, a side door. Right? Yeah. Like there's, like, a little – okay, got it, got it. So I see I see them go up. Now, are you seeing anybody come out of that door while you're here? No, waiting? Like, like, it, like, I literally, literally like, no one is getting anything. Okay. One car pulled in five minutes after we got there. And since that point, I saw no one get helped. Okay. So there was 14 <laughs> cars. I saw one get helped in 35 minutes at that point. So then I that, so then I see there's a slow there's a pile of people standing up by the side door where the uh, delivery people were supposed to be coming out. So everyone's standing there. I get a Snapchat picture of I can see our totes inside this door, and just no <laughs> one is in here to do anything. Amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, this is ridiculous. Whatever. And all of a sudden, like another ten minutes later, so at seven forty, I hear a clatter outside. And there's a whole squad of people rolling down with their items. Tell me, would you say that? Would you say that there arose such a clatter? I would. There arose okay. such a clatter. Ladder company. Uh, everyone comes out. I get the scoop. Uh, apparently, people were waiting way longer than us. Like one lady was waiting for an hour and a half for her stuff. Oh my! One gosh. lady was waiting for two hours. Actually, went home and came back and waited longer. And was like, I left my kid at home by themselves too long. I didn't expect this to take this long. Uh, a third group of people. A guy was waiting for three hours outside Holy and, no, cow. and no one was doing anything. And I can't fathom what you could possibly buy from Walmart. That's that would make you three wait hours. Three hours. Yeah. And then eventually it was found out that their system of doing the mobile orders to check in or check them out, whatever you want to call that service, their system was down. So they weren't doing anything. They're just sitting there. <laughs> Wonderful. And then I got extra pissed because I was like, when I walked into that kid, why was his story? Uh, we're just running behind or short staffed or what the hell he said. Like, I'm he sure didn't say the like, default answer. Like, right, I'm sure. I know, but like, like yeah. just so then I got extra mad about that, and especially with everyone else waiting. And eventually the solution was they just manually started writing down people's order numbers and checking them in that way. And then it was all fine. That's crazy. So, <laughs> so I spent an hour in Walmart's parking lot tonight for two 52 gallon storage totes to put away Halloween decorations. You're going to love those totes, though. You're going to have a story now. I'm going to smash every- them. Every time you get at Halloween, you're going to be like, remember when I wasted my life in a Walmart parking lot to get these totes? What a, what a wonderful time that was. Oh my isn't, d- isn't consumerism great? <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> yes, well, I, feel, I feel so bad for the people that didn't hawk out more than I did. Because some yeah. people were just letting it ride. Like, that seems it, bold. I would be the let it ride guy because, like, <laughs> one time, Toby, I did a mobile order at a um, – at a restaurant, like a, like a to-go order, um, where, where it's in the similar vein, where you pull up, you check in, and they're supposed to bring it out to you. And they never brought it out to me. And I was like, I waited too long. Like it was, I, I waited like a shocking amount of time. I think I was there for maybe, maybe like 45 minutes or an hour or something waiting, <laughs> which was way too dumb. And I realized like, oh, I should have gone and asked about this like a long time ago. And I didn't. And then the fact that I didn't, I was embarrassed that I hadn't gone in earlier. And I then was like too ashamed to go in at that point. So then I just left. I didn't, I did never do anything about my food and I just left and never got any food. <laughs> that's terrible. the way, that's the way my anxiety works. We're like, like if I didn't talk to you for two weeks or maybe like we use it a little bit longer. Like if I didn't talk to you for a month or like make plans to hang out with you or yeah, anything weird like that, like the longer I would wait, the more awkward and nervous I would feel about breaking the ice. Yeah. And I would just let it get worse and worse because like doing it in a month would feel weird to me to be like, Oh, we didn't hang out for a while. You know, I'm sorry, whatever. So I'd let it go. And then, the, and then week five would hit and I'd be like, this is more, even even more awkward than last week. And now like it's been five <laughs> weeks and then I'd feel even worse and I still wouldn't do it. And then week six would come by and be like, well, I still, I can't say shit now. I don't know what to do. And just try to hold out. And yep. Yeah, like in a normal circumstance, like walking in that building and saying like, oh, hey, uh, I didn't get my food. I've been sitting out there waiting. I, you know, can I get it now? Is like not a big deal. And I've done many things like that. But in that moment where I'd psyched myself up about like it's been too long, 
nothing could have gotten me in those doors. <laughs> like, <laughs> it would have been like moving heaven and earth to get me to walk in there for some reason. Cause yeah, it was just like, like anxiety through the roof at that point. Um, so yeah, I totally, I totally get that. <laughs> and like, um, I'm, I'm rational enough for like, I should have, I shouldn't have, but like the instinct to rip into the kid for not really helping and just making up stories and being like, Oh, I, I don't know. We're just, we're just delayed. Like I get mad <laughs> and looking at him, I could see the, he looked like a, like a baby, a baby deer. He had, the, right. he had a doe like face. And I'm like, I can't go off in this kid. I'm going to feel way worse about this. than he is after I walk away, like totally, it's not worth this. And so I just let it go. I was like, you know what? I walked in, I spoke up for the group. Uh, apparently a bunch of people probably spoke up for the group and we just went <laughs> from there. Cause I'm sure that kid too, like you're a, a reasonable person walking in there, but I'm sure like the average person that comes in and ends up at that kid's, you know, customer service desk is just a raging lunatic, right? He probably like, caught some, he probably caught some high heat before I walked in there. Oh, guaranteed, guaranteed. So he's just doing anything he can to like get through his freaking shift. It's not <laughs> worth it. Just need to survive, man. I get to go home and play some freaking Xbox after this. And he just, he's just telling you like, I, I they're just backed up, man. I, they're just backed up. You got to wait. <laughs> just uh, let me know. Let me know. I don't know. Listen, uh, when, when does my shift end in 45 minutes? You got to come back in, in 46 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a certain time I didn't mention to you. A certain time. Yep. Uh, yeah, I feel bad because yeah, in the moment you want to, you want to be angry in situations like that. But then it's like, I can't help but put myself into like that, their, their shoes. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'd be even worse at this job than you are. Like, I, there's no way that I would handle this stressful situation in any meaningfully good way. <laughs> I'd be doing like, the exact same thing that you're doing. And I would be a deer in the headlights when someone came in and be like, so you didn't think to like check when the orders were not <laughs> were coming through? And he's like, oh, no, it didn't work. I don't know. I worked retail slash retail management at a bargain store, Circuit City, and GameStop. I've caught in so much heat from people in my life for shit that's not my fault. Oh, for I sure. Will, I will never be that person to somebody else. Like, I've <laughs> caught in so much heat. <laughs> it's just such a, yeah, like, I don't know. I guess with the Walmart thing here, too, I would have been worried. Because, like, a lot of times when, when we do, like, the pickups like that, like, we're doing, like, groceries and stuff where it's, like, it's a decent amount of, of money, right? Like, here's yeah, like you want to lose the yeah. You, like, I would be afraid of driving away and then being like, I because I could totally see, right? Like, oh, it doesn't get brought out for like an hour. We leave angrily. We contact customer support, and they're like, no, it was sitting in the store, and all your food's gone bad. So no, we're not going to refund you, right? Like, I could see that, like A to B to C. Um, but yeah, the way you're talking about, like, a lot of these things too are usually like they're coming from like the back or like a stock room. You can't even tell how to get to the people who would have your stuff sometimes. Uh, yeah, not, not a fun, <laughs> not a fun setup. <laughs> well, and like, and then of course in my mind, I'm playing out like all the cool guy scenarios that I could possibly do. So of course it's things like I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to go like, I'm going to go grab the two toasts off the shelf and just walk out with them. And when they try to stop me, when they check my receipt, I'd be like, here's my fucking receipt on my phone. You guys didn't bring my stuff out, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I calm down. I'm like, yeah, it's probably not worth like having the cops called or like security or whatever on this <laughs> stupid I'm going to steal. And when I steal, I'm going to tell them, ha, I'm kind of justified in this theft. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. And then they're going to say the obvious. Well, how do we know you didn't just get those and then come in and steal these? <laughs> yeah. There was yeah. no way. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we, so we, we, we do, uh, we did the grocery pickup thing today, actually. Um, and we got a bunch of extra food that we didn't buy. So someone else went and got grocery pickup and is missing like four different bags of food that we ended up with, uh, which is a bummer for them. <laughs> <laughs> but the fun thing is Toby, they got good stuff that I'm excited about having now. <laughs> like they got like things what? that we don't normally get. Um, they got like uh, steak and filet mignon and shrimp okay. and Let lobster. Me it, back. And... <laughs> it wasn't that good, but they got like a cheesy smoked sausage that I was like, "Oh, that's good. I'll try that." And they got <laughs> they got some Lunchables, which were like, "Oh, lo those are fun. I like those for snacks and things like that." It was like it was like little things, but it was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I'm on board with these people and their their relative food orders." <laughs> just a slight perk. Yeah, just a little bonus. 
Um, usually we're on the receiving end of not getting uh, half of our food we ordered. So it was nice to be on the winning end of that for once. Well, I'm glad you survived the Walmart debacles. I, uh, yeah, sounds- I, I made it home. I made it home th- quicker than I thought I was going to. Because I, I warned you up front. I said, if I'm not home within an hour and a half, basically. Or it actually would have been almost two hours at that point from the time I told you. Uh, <laughs> I would have been losing my goddamn mind. <laughs> we had that conversation. I started editing photos because I'm like, it's going to be a while. So I'm sitting here <laughs> making the album art for this episode. But then, yeah, you showed up quick. Yeah. <laughs> Business professional or something. So professional. Speaking of professional, Toby, we have uh, some emails to read this week. So let's jump into those. We've got a, got a big show this week. So let's uh, let's power on. Uh, if you want to send an email, like our friends here tonight did, send those over to cast at commonwritersucks.com. That is cast at commonwritersucks.com. Our first email comes in from Shade. Uh, Shade is talking about last week's episode where the uh, common writer kids headed off to Kyoto. Uh, and some interesting, uh, interesting notes, I guess, about the trip to Kyoto. So Shade talks about, of course, first off, that Gotchard wasn't airing uh, for the the time between these two episodes, uh, which, of course, we know from from last last week. Um, Shade tells us that they were off because of a collage marathon festival or something. It's not golf this time, but gosh dang it, Japanese sports programs. Why can't you just let us watch children's TV shows in peace? Yeah. <laughs> um, and Shade mentions the Gotcha versus Legend special. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but uh, that would kind of filled the gap between the uh, the break that Gotcha was taking. So Shade says, first off, to further convince Josh to watch Tokyuger, I know the suits don't look too appealing to me, but believe me, the suits gimmick is really freaking cool. Also, Tokyuger is written by the same person who did Shinkenger too, so if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. And funnily enough, Kamen Rider Deno is also written by the same writer as Shinkenger and Tokyuger too. Uh, I didn't mention it because Deno is more of a time travel show than a train show, though out of the three shows mentioned, Deno is the oldest one. So, okay, that is a thing that does push me over the edge because Shinkenger, I love it's so freaking good. Uh, Tokyuger being both a train show and written by the same person who wrote Shinkenger is that's that's a big selling point for me. So I will I will give Tokyuger a shot. Um, I actually, while I was waiting on you, started started downloading the first couple episodes. So oh, it is no. it's happening. It's a Sentai, so I, I won't force you into it, Toby. <laughs> I will. We just, I will we just call us Power Rangers here. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a Power Rangers, if you will. Uh, and then Shade goes on to talk about uh, the last episode of Gotcha in episode 10. Uh, the heroes go on a school trip to Kyoto. And more specifically, they go to the Toei Kyoto Studio Park, is what uh, that place is called, IRL. Shade says a lot of Toku and even just Toei films in general are filmed there. Uh, every old-timey Japan or time-traveling scene, you go to the Toei Kyoto Park. They even have a Common Rider and Sentai Museum section in the park. Um, and then Shade linked a few different videos walking through the, the park and the various things they have to offer. And it looks so awesome. So you you walk in and they have like this big, huge uh, Common Rider section where like um, at the time Geats was the most current show. So Geats was out front and they had like a full standee, like mannequin dressed up in the Geats armor. And then as you walk through the hallway that kind of snakes around, you see every single common rider, like there's a mannequin with the costume on and their motorcycle. So like you like walk by each one and you can stand and pose for pictures. They're all like, like of course life size. Um, which is super, super cool seeing all those. And then, of course, there's a big shop where there's like every common Rider merchandise item that you could possibly imagine. Um, and yeah, same thing for Super Sentai. And then the actual like um, the studio park itself is filled with a bunch of attractions. A lot of them are like kids stuff, right? But like if you're a kid, it looks amazing. <laughs> it's like uh, tons of little like games and things you can do and activities and stuff like that. And then in the back of the park, they have like, the the torso of a life-size evangelion mech <laughs> so you can like climb up in it and take pictures from the head Fantastic. or you can st- you can stand in its hand and take take your picture like while it's holding you <laughs> which is pretty cool uh so yeah the place looks awesome i definitely it's on my list of like places to go if i ever end up in japan <laughs> um but uh yeah looks looks cool thanks for the info on that shade and the videos were 
fun to watch through. Shade says, not going to lie, I'm kind of glad they didn't entirely forget the high school thing. Uh, it was one of my complaints about the show so far. Because, we, yeah, we talked about that last time where they suddenly remembered that they're in high school. They showed them in a regular classroom. They're going on a regular school trip. It, it's so just in time for the field trip that came back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then Shane says, finally, if I may, I'm going to share something not exactly Toku related, but this whipped me in the face with the force of a pickup truck, and I need to share this with someone. So this is, uh, to describe it to everyone out there, it is a tweet from Hideo Kojima, who is the uh, famed designer of the Metal Gear games. Um, he's very into film and cinema, if you follow him online. And he tweeted out a picture of himself in a theater and said, watched Five Nights at Freddy's. He went to Hell see yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's. Someone replied to him and said, did you like it very much? And he replied to that person and said, the chicken was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is incredible. I love the idea of Kojima just deciding that the chicken was hot in the Five Nights at Freddy's. Just him watching Five Nights at Freddy's alone is hilarious. And then thinking the chicken is hot is just perfect. Along those lines, there was a different group of tweets I saw. All from the same man, Mr. Kojima, Kojima, whatever. I saw made a joke. Hideo Kojima reviews this week's two major film releases. So he watched The Killer and he watched The Marvels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like everything I've heard about him is that he is, and everything I've seen online with, with him is that he is a massive music movie fan. Um, I think I so, saw like an, an interview at some point with him in his movie room, and he's got like all the crazy box sets and every like obscure film that you could imagine, and it's just like you know shelf after shelf after shelf of all of his Blu-rays and stuff. So, and I need to read you both reviews of these two films you watched. Okay, though. I'm ready. So I'm ready. one is David Fincher's new film, The Killer. And the other is the Marvels, the dumb, you know, Marvel yeah, cinematic sure. verse. The view of the killer. Watch it. Fin- Fincher's new film, The Killer. Is it based on Lawrence Block's Killer Keller? I thought so, but it was a graphic novel. The OP, a collage of killing techniques, was surprisingly simple. And I thought, isn't that Mr. Kyle? At first, I was a bit disappointed, but I was drawn in from the very beginning of the film. I was emotionally involved with Fast Bender, the nameless assassin, without a name, and without dialogue. The Smith's famous music played all over the place. As usual, Res- Reznor's sound effects were superb. The film begins with a monologue about the wait for the assassination, the failure, the escape, and the counterattack. The film moves from Paris to, to Dominica to North America, showcasing the assassin's know-how, lessons learned, and details. While maintaining tension, the ups and downs of the story is dramatic as the classics that morph from the opening to the closing chapters. This will be a strong IP. Will it become a series? I wish I had seen it in a movie theater. Highly recommended. Thumbs up emoji. So that was his review of The Killer. All right. His review of The Marvels. Saw The Mar- Marvels on IMAX 3D. Is that it? It's That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, from what I've heard, it's, it's so it seems like appropriate. <laughs> it seems like an appropriate <laughs> review of both films. Um, but yeah, so like, I guess him and <laughs> movies recently seem to be a wild tweet fest. But the duality of that one cracked me up the other day. Because like, someone put, just put both together side by side. And it's just the funniest <laughs> thing of like, obviously he had way more opinions on the fancy David Fincher movie than the Marvels, which would be like, Oh, this is a huge blockbuster. This is this. His review is just, I went to see it. I went to see it. It happened. Yeah, I, I know you're not a big Marvel person. <clears throat> um, and I'm I'm not really that much of one anymore either. Like as far as the movies go, um, they've they've lost me a little bit. But this one especially seems like it is not not working for people. Um I saw that it had opened like it still made like $47 million or something, but like that is the worst opening for a Marvel movie ever, apparently. <laughs> so, so things aren't going well over there in Marvel town. Apparently not. Cause used to Marvel could put out a movie with characters that you'd never heard of. And it would, you know, make a billion dollars like guardians of the galaxy. And, and now when they do that, they put out a movie with some characters you've you'd never heard of and captain Marvel, who everyone liked. And then, no one goes to see it like the tide has turned heavily on on marvel films apparently the two flaws that i've read online is number one they've ran out of comic book source material and they have to write their own stories now and it doesn't work for their writing staff Eh, i mean like there's there's a million comic stories they can they can always pull more if they not but not when they do not when they end game and everything else or i don't know so i saw that one and i saw there's so much oversaturation 
that like you have to watch literally like everything on Disney plus yep. along with extra movies, along with read comics. And like, there was some combination between WandaVision and Dr. Strange where you wouldn't understand half of one of them. If you didn't watch the TV show as well and all sorts of shit like that. That's the thing that really broke me on them. Cause it's like, you know, I think, I think the movies were starting to go a little downhill when like the Disney plus stuff happened. And then when, when they exploded, just vomited shows onto Disney plus. And I didn't really have much desire to keep up with like, you know, weekly TV shows of Marvel stuff. Cause I don't really watch that many weekly TV shows really. And they, they didn't sound that interesting. I've since gone back and watched some of them and they've been okay. But yeah, like I totally get that. Like not wanting to like, have this giant interconnected TV movie universe and it just being too much. Like, like if I had to go to the theater, you know, a couple times a year to keep up with the story, like that's fine. But like, if I have to go to the theater a few times a year and then also watch like seven seasons of a TV show to keep up with it, <laughs> that's, that's too much. But especially cause like the TV shows, I think like a good chunk of them have sucked really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did watch WandaVision. That one was like, kind of okay like the premise is interesting more than anything and i watched season one of loki which was very good um so i need to watch season two now but uh aside from that i have not been wowed by what i've seen or heard of the (laughs) the tv show stuff same with star wars though too like star wars uh the movies you know were were of a quality (laughs) and then the tv show stuff happened and for the most part that stuff's been like Oh, so here's all this extra work I have to do so I can understand the next movie. Cool. Sounds like fun. Yeah, isn't it? It's great being a fan of things now, <laughs> nowadays. So in the worst segue ever, speaking of being a fan of things, let's go back to the emails because we're off on the tangent. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. We, we got lost in this one. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little bit. <laughs> just, I'm just uh, just losing my mind over here about, about, about fandoms. Um, the next email comes in from Kieran. So we got another email from Shade, but we'll pepper that in as we uh, talk about the Legend Rider show. Uh, but next one comes in from Kieran. Uh, Kieran says, "It's uh, gr- I gotta say, it's great how not long after Toby finished Like a Dragon Ishin, we all we go all Kyoto Samurai. I mean, we had Hodoro dressed up as Ryoma Sakamoto, a.k.a. Kiryu Kazuma. Uh, then you had Kudo in the classic blue Shinsugumi garb, summoning the sword belonging to Okita Soji, a.k.a. the Yakuza goat, Goro Majima. Yeah, uh, yeah the funniest thing is like, so Kieran was sending me messages over at Discord about it too. And like the one day he, f- uh, he figured out like all of the lore was tied to real life things and was all excited. And like him and I were talking about like, Hey, look, here's the actual shrine. Here's the actual people that try to match up with and like crazy crossover. And that's from like a dragon is the the real lore or the or the common writer stuff's the real life. Uh, uh Ishan. Okay, Ishan. Okay, got it, got it. Is that game so was that game good like when you finished it? Like I know it's like a weird uh like a dragon cosplay, basically. But did you did you enjoy it? Uh it was fine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it was the story was the worst of the Yakuza's, but it felt like a Yakuza game still. Does it like, ever like, does it ever, do, do you ever get any more explanation for why this person looks like Kiryu or anything like that? No, it's just, they, okay. they completely just roll with. Got it. These are, Got these it. are not the people with the same voices and the same names and everything else. Okay. That that's, that's what I wondered if it would ever be like a, <laughs> like an Assassin's Creed situation. Like, <laughs> and then, then Kiryu wakes up in the animus. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the I guess, um, correlation there is pretty fun, too. Um, uh, so back to Kieran's email. Kieran says, I'm going to say that's who she's dressed as because she's, uh, because having the leads dressed as Kiryu and Majima would just be perfect. <laughs> but anyway, enough Yakuza talk. We're here for Gotchard. Uh, specifically, Gotchard card talk. So Kieran says, the phase two box should be out very soon. With that, 60 Kemis have been released, completing the first six groups. One thing I saw someone post a bit back that seems to be accurate so far is that the rarity of the cards in the main set sets tell you what we'll see in the show. If the highest rarity of a Kemi is just a basic rare, 
all we get is a one time wild form. If it comes in a super rare, we'll get a rider form, but it won't stick around long and it will probably reuse parts for the armor. The main rider forms will come in ultra and parallel rares. Um, those are the ones that get the fancy morphing sequence, show up more than once, and get both rider and wild forms. The one thing I don't know is why there were three cards in the first set that only came in common. Maybe there will be combos we won't see, or they just forgot to make the other rarities. Who really knows? Yeah, that, that was probably like a space issue, I would imagine, at that point. Just like, you know, hey, we could fit three more cards on the sheet. Do we want to make them? Do we not? I, I bet mean, that's what that was. Um, but that's interesting. I'm sure it's going to be simple. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. That they actually like, that's how they display the rarity crossed over to the TV, TV show thing. And that means too, if you, if you care about just getting the like fanciest <laughs> uh, forms, like the ones that are the actual, like real writer forms that are going to get used a bunch, you can get like just the super rare cards. If you want, just like, just have this complete blinged out collection. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, thanks for that insight, Kieran. It's interesting to see people dive in and do those, uh, that analysis of the cards and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, very cool. All right. So yeah, again, if you want to send us an email, uh, as uh, Kieran and shade here did send those over to cast at common dot com cast at common dot com. And with that, we'll jump into kind of the meat of our episode here today, talking about some common writer episodes. Of course, we're going to start off as I punch my microphone. Apologies, everyone. Uh, we're going to start off talking about last week uh, where we did get that sort of interim episode. So common writer legend uh, was introduced in the beginning of, I think, a mini series, uh, common writer gotcha versus common writer, common writer legend episode one. And this was basically a 15 minute little episode that introduces us to common writer legend. Uh, so, Toby, what 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 did you think about about this episode, and uh, specifically about common writer legend? So, to the best of my recollection, is the whole thing is just like he's a collector of common writer powers. Yeah, I think essentially is what that boils down to. <laughs> this is what like, he what he like describes. The, like he has a what we'll call a chemi card. Like, I mean, we, we, like we, as the people living in the real world out here, we've seen the fancy rider cards a bunch yeah. of times now. Yeah. And he basically collects all of the old common riders in weird parallel universe, VR goggle enabled <laughs> lower world, whatever. Yeah. I think and that's then they exactly have it. like yeah. uh X-Men training room battle where he's like, watch as I call the legends. And he calls like the legends. I feel like we see all the time now like game and that generation ish of yep yeah i think he calls in what uh gaim hibiki uh maybe fies maybe uh he turns into deno at the end um so yeah he 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 basically i i feel like i feel like common Rider legend is their quick little mini series justification <sighs> for making the rider chemi cards because okay. otherwise there's there's like no reason for those to exist, right? But they anytime they put out a gimmick belt, they want to be able to make the the old common writers as gimmick items because those sell really well, I think. <laughs> so like for example, when uh common rider Geo happened, they had the um they had the ride watches, and of course they've made every possible common rider ride watch that you that you could want but that was the whole gimmick of that whole season right as he was putting he was collecting rider ride watches and, and all that stuff so with this where the chemi cards are monsters there's no real reason to have the common rider chemis unless i guess you gin up a show <laughs> like this <laughs> so i i think that's probably the like underlying like uh corporate reason for the show existing yeah because basically like he when he talks to Hodoro, he's like look at my cards and just like whips a tablecloth off of a table revealing like every rider card there probably is like eight <laughs> yep. of them. Yep. It's just like, look how cool I am. I, have, I own everything. And I like have the whole collection. Pitch. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say I, I loved him as a character. He's, he's, he's this like uh crazy flamboyant over the top character who thinks he's just like God's gift to man, basically. <laughs> um, he he won't stop saying things are gorgeous or things aren't gorgeous 
He brought he he trapped Hodoro in a cage and brought him here specifically because he wasn't gorgeous enough. Uh, Makes sense. A, co- yeah. a common problem. When, when we're introduced to him, he's in a bathtub first. He gets out. He puts on a robe, and then he he drops the robe and just gives like a full frontal view to, to <laughs> this high school kid that he's he's trapped in a cage. <laughs> it's just not not a great look. <laughs> um, the other other hilarious thing about this episode, g- genuinely. I watched it again tonight and laughed out loud the second time I saw it was when Hodoro gets gets uh, brought into Legends world and he he meets Legends Butler <laughs> and it's Kajiki. It's his friend, um, but just it's the, it's the same face, same same person. But of course, like the alternate reality version of that friend and the the friend introduces himself as Butler legends butler and then p- up on the screen pops up butler the butler <laughs> <laughs> which makes me laugh every time that his name is butler and he is a butler it makes it easier uh, to remember yeah w- watching him uh watching him watch legend is pretty funny too in the, in the episode if you watch it back again like just his his facial expressions like while his boss is doing stuff doing ridiculous insane things is pretty great like he he's a really good character <laughs> throughout the whole thing um, but yeah, he, so, and this gets into Shane's email here a little bit too. Legend is weirdly close to decayed in a lot of ways. And I know that's a show you haven't seen and it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, but there's a lot of overlap and a lot of references to decayed. So, uh, we'll jump in here to what shade kind of points out between the two. So, First up, the very first scene, we have the scientists that are kind of working. Um, They are working on a machine that is basically a giant uh, common rider decayed driver, (laughs) which is which is interesting. So they've blown decayed's driver up and are doing some sort of science on it. Um, Of course, the opening is a reference to decayed as well with the way the like mask kind of flips around as the opening happens. Um, And then when common rider legend introduces himself there's literally a track from the common rider decayed theme song like the, the theme playing like it's it's a song from the soundtrack to common rider decayed <laughs> um they talk about aurora curtain system the aurora curtain system that's how they explain that they, he can travel between worlds that's how they brought hodoro to their world and that's something straight out of common rider decayed um that's how decayed can kind of like warp through different dimensions and universes as well and when they're explaining that uh the song parallel world plays which is also from common rider decayed um that one's very on the nose yeah super on the nose (laughs) uh and then shade goes into the the a lot of detail about the driver so the legend driver is super similar to the the decayed driver um but kind of in reverse. So like where you put the card in and you push the decay driver in with legends, you put the card in and you pull the, the legend driver out. Um, decay holds the card up and flips it over around backwards. Um, or vice versa. I forget. And then legend is the opposite where he'll show the back of the card and flip it around forward. Um, so like they're just complete reverses of each other in terms of like, like a lot of their driver stuff and their poses and all that stuff. Um, so there's a lot of lot of weird things there, and even the when he summons all four of the writers together, uh, that is from Common Rider D End, which is a secondary writer from from Decade. So he's like even pulling in some stuff that other writers from the show Decade were doing. So I think it'll be interesting to see if there's more of a connection there, or if they're just being cheeky and referencing Decade because they wanted to make a new character who's, who's super similar to him. And kind of collecting all the writers or like if there's more <laughs> to it than that. Um, but he even he even feels like decayed a little bit because he so legend in the show feels like a bad guy a little bit because he captures Hodoro, he's you know, cares about gorgeousness. He doesn't seem to super care about um Hodoro that much. He just wants him to be, be more gorgeous. And like there's a lot of like weird, like, you know, he thinks he's better than everyone else vibes going on. And in decayed it's the exact same thing happening there like he uh is called uh i think the the destroyer of worlds is what is what they call decayed 
because he goes to different dimensions and like horrible things start happening and everyone thinks he's causing it and he doesn't really super care for the most part that that's happening he just sort of is like a tourist in all these places um and yeah i think he's the coolest guy in the room basically he just might be he just might be he just might be um so yeah she she goes into a lot more detail on all the comparisons but but yeah suffice to say there's a lot of a lot of decayed stuff happening there and then shade has some more info for us for uh the person we see at the end of this episode so the the bad guy group in this mini series is called hundred and at the end we see a a member of hundred kind of standing uh overlooking the town and he holds what looks like a ride watch we don't really know much about that yet but the person, the actor who is playing that character is Robin Furura, uh, who previously, Shade says, played the villain Storius in Common Rider Saber. Though it doesn't seem like he's Storius in this because uh, things happened to Storius. <laughs> uh, Shade says Robin's a pretty cool guy, though. He's an amateur photographer and director, and he also speaks English and talks about Saber pretty often with fans overseas. I'm glad he's back. So that's kind of cool that it's uh, someone who I- interacts with the, the English speaking fans. So it's no like throwback nod of it, like to how they always do it of like, hey, you were in the Common Rider verse once, you can come back and do another thing <laughs> or come back and be yourself as sure. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's Just like a recurring involved. character. Yeah, it's it's an actor coming back, but not it doesn't sound like a character. Because yeah, I wondered the same thing. Like when they do that sort of zoom out reveal of that character, I'm like, should I know who this is? <laughs> Am I supposed to know this person? As yeah, always, apparently. the answer is yes, and you don't. Just like when I watch these things. <laughs> that's yeah, that's fair. Uh, so yeah, that is that I'm interested to see, see the second episode of this, um, which I'm not sure when it's coming out, but I'm interested to see, uh, what happens in it because, um, yeah, he's a fun character and I like Hodoro interacting with him, but I have no idea what they're going to (laughs) do with that, (laughs) with that series. All right. So that is Counter-Rider Gotchard versus Counter-Rider Legend. And of course we also watched Counter-Rider Gotchard episode 10 for this week another dramatic uh, two-parter wrap-up exactly uh this is the uh, big culmination of our trip to kyoto so last time around uh kajiki met his uh, in his fateful encounter he met hajiri it was love at first sight basically they both love ufos and monsters and they, all they that nerded, fun stuff yeah they nerded out and reading their little their silly little their little magazine yep yeah but then she ran off to go talk to an arsonist, and uh, Kijiki was very sad about that happening. He was he was afraid she was dating her boyfriend or <laughs> dating her brother. D- I meant. Dating her brother. <laughs> so this episode picks up where we're in the middle of the fight with the uh, the tree guy, the tree malgam. Of course, um, the common rider buddies <laughs> brought Hodoro his card so that he can finally hench in, and a little. Uh, the little fight ensues. It was, it, was, it was a good little fight. I liked it. The um, the monster like blocks the rider kick and then uses his like cuts and stuff, which is pretty cool. Goldash comes in for the save. <laughs> the the bike. I love that the bike saved him. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and... I think I think the monster actually blocking the finisher was one of my favorite parts. Like the early part of that fight where, so you know, it's it's too easy for the common rider sometimes. It but is this yeah. time. He was like, oh no no no, I'm not getting kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was awesome, right? It was like, no, I've seen this before. That's not going to happen. It's what it felt like. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to try harder than that. And try harder he did because uh, we get a new form here at this at this moment. Goldash gets paired with uh, Mechanicani, the crab. Uh, and they he becomes Gold Mechanor. Um, Which, of course, is a motorcycle crab. <laughs> exactly. A motorcycle crab mech. Because <laughs> why wouldn't it be? This was it, it's a big bulky form. Uh, the feet look a little bit like the first level of X Aid transformations, where they're the giant bulky kind, um, which of course you and I love. <laughs> so that won me over. Uh, but the top part is like full on mech. He's got like double rail rail guns and stuff. Um, and I it liked like, it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was a weird mix of like when there was. I don't remember the name of the actual form, but like. The, in Geats, they had like the construction worker costume. Yeah, where like and and a mix of like some of the, we're like a little more than halfway through X Aid, and it reminds me of the new version of one of their outfits too, where it has like the weird like tuning fork hands and looks extra <laughs> construction mech. 
or like or like the uh from the movie alien like the little walker thing that really drives it has like oh yeah grippy little grippy hands and stuff like a weird mix of all those things put together that's a great reference yeah it also if you remember um was it last week or two weeks ago um we had uh we had spanner he he like got weird arms too that were kind of similar to this where he had the like the helicopter on one side and and stuff like that he he had the weird like attachable arm situation go on (laughs) um i just love my note for this fight which is uh uh, Common Rider wipes out the tree after becoming a crab for a while. There you go. Uh, and I thought the crab form looked awesome. Like most of the time, where he turns into an animal, I'm like, yeah, okay, let's move on. But the 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 bicycle golden crab form, I thought was pretty good. It was definitely worked better than I thought they could make it because, especially at one point, they make it basically crab walks while motorcycling around. Like it's yes. literally just yeah. like both forms and doing both the things that a crab motorcycle should do or a motorcycle crab, whatever. <laughs> exactly. And it all works. It's great. <laughs> uh, of course he wins the fight. Of course he gets the jungle Jan card, uh, which I'm sure we'll see later. And the abyssal sister uh, who was hanging out, picks up that piece of scrap. Remember which last time she was collecting those weird pieces of scrap, they were doing some sort of uh, uh, dark alchemy. So we'll have to find out what that's about later. She has some plans. And she definitely has some plans. She has some plans. And of course, Kijiki runs in. He's super sad. His fateful encounter was cut short. And he, he explains it all that uh, he thinks that Hijiri basically had a boyfriend. Which, of course, we're, it's the beginning of this Hallmark movie of an episode. <laughs> and Indeed. There's a, yeah. <laughs> it goes some places. Um, the teacher, of course, comes over and uh, and tells the, the common writer pals that the there was another escapee. His name was Himeno Surugi. He was a suspected arsonist, and of course, they recognized the name Himeno and realize it's the brother of Hijiri. Um, Does he have a sister? Yeah, I, I thought it was weird that they didn't tell uh, Kajiki right off the bat. Like they let him believe that that she was running off to an actual boyfriend for a long time for for really no <sighs> reason that I can tell. Well, just to make him happy. Because it, it got to lead to the fantastic scene, which might be a little bit later. Uh, people in a cafe are watching a news report about the brother. Yep. And uh, Kajiki pushes, pushes his face against the glass to get the kid's attention. And he does like the, the two finger, the two fingers to the eyes and keeps pointing to the phone. I'm making this so gesture good. as I talk. So he kind of like keeps showing, saying like, He's trying to like pantomime through the glass, like, please show me the phone. Please show me the phone. Yeah. And then all the friends were behind him throwing up X symbols with their hands saying, like, don't show him, don't show him. Yeah, it was so funny. Yeah, like that was it was a super slapstick moment. But like, I think that the actor that plays Kajiki is so funny, like that he, he worked so well because, yes, he's smushing his face into the glass while at the same time doing like very believable like show me the phone you're gonna show, <laughs> show me show me the phone <laughs> uh it was really good yeah with this and the legend writer where he's butler the butler um i th- these last two weeks have really won me over on thinking that that actor is amazing <laughs> he's, he's, your, he's, he's your new buddy <laughs> he, i think he is yeah i think he's my new favorite because he's genuinely super funny and like 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 i said like watching his face from the from the the uh special was just like it's great he's very funny <laughs> He adds a lot to scenes, and this, yeah, that scene was was super super good. So yes, that that's where he figures out, of course, that it's the brother. He realizes that his uh, his lover is still there, <laughs> so he has a uh, renewed vigor in, I guess, tracking her down. Still has a shot. Uh, meanwhile, of course, the siblings have a little catching up to do. Um, they're kind of reminiscing about, you know, when they were kids and blah, blah, blah. And they, and they saw the, the, the glowing orbs of the spirits yep. of the family. Exactly. And you realize pretty quickly that uh, Hajiri thinks her brother is innocent. She's like, you could never set those fires. And he was like, well, I actually did set those fires. <laughs> and also maybe the spirits of our family that you saw, maybe they were actually uh, things I set on fire too. <laughs> which, which, is like the ultimate of all things. Well, obviously with her saying like, yeah, this moment meant a lot to me. And him just being like, nah, like 
it really meant nothing. Like, kind of go fuck yourself. Like, I don't really care about this at all. <laughs> totally. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and not only that, but, like, he, he kind of wants to hurt her. Um, he, he like, resents her uh, from existing, basically, and holding him back and uh, kind of being in charge of her when they were kids and stuff. So, you know, he's, he's, ready, to, he's ready to do some, some sibling murder, I think, is really where we're at here. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh let's see catching up he transforms into basically a giant battery that's that's the amalgam that he took on so um, it's like this electricity electrified battery looking character i guess that makes the most sense but because he kept talking about the fire stuff i was trying to figure out if he was a lighter or he looked like a firecracker like a tnt dynamite block thing. yeah yeah, I thought I thought I definitely thought like T and T block as well at first. Um, I could see lighter. I think I think battery though. I think <laughs> I can pull up the card here. Let's see. I wrote down the actual card name somewhere, but that was where I had kind of settled on what it was. But it's Rydenji, I think, is the card that he is. It's based on a battery, according to the internet. So yes, okay. it is. I mean, that makes sense. Like, all things considered, it makes sense. But, like, when he was pushing the, I start fires. I love fire. Yeah. I set shit on fire because you're, I had to raise your stupid ass. Like, I just, my mind went to, like, something fiery or explosive first before he started throwing lightning bolts the rest of the episode. Now, now that I'm looking at a picture of him, like, without moving as quickly as he does in the episode, the... Um, the battery form, like the center part of him that is the battery, has a lightning bolt on it. It's like like a like a battery kind of symbol, and he actually has a positive and a negative marking. Oh, so that's like, even better. Yeah, I didn't even realize that in the episode, but uh, his eyeball is the negative sign. Like if he closes his eye, it forms the negative. That's awesome. That's that's, yeah. that's good use. That's good use of actually like making it tie too. I like that. Like like, yeah. the, like the visual compared to what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I, I wish that some of these, like, yeah, I wish they would stand still for just a second so I could take it in. But, like, <laughs> Kamen Rider is, like, it moves so fast. Like, as someone who is, spends a fair bit of time going through and trying to take screenshots of these episodes, sometimes it is next to impossible because there's just never a still frame. <laughs> <laughs> They're always moving and it's always blurry. Yeah, exactly. Totally. And, like, it works in motion and you can kind of pick up on what's going on. But, like, it very much is apparent, like... Oh wow! Like there's never a non blurry frame in this whole <laughs> this whole fight, which is impressive. But <laughs> uh, so he transforms into uh, into the battery, and uh, you know starts his starts his raging, <laughs> starts his little <laughs> starts his little fire move there. Um, and sorry, I'm jumping all around here in my notes now as I scroll down to look for the <laughs> look for the name of the thing. Um, the comrade of course shows up and grabs, grabs a jury kind of yanks her out of the fire. That's continuing to grow as the brother is flaming up and, you know, common rider fight happens. Um, and, and I, the cool thing, my to cool takeaway here was that Kajiri is just stoked to see the common rider. <laughs> and it was one of those things again, where like, so I know at least in the sense of this episode season, whatever, they have the the spooky stuff. It's supposed to be like weird legacy, like legendary things like, oh, there's UFOs, there's ghosts, whatever. It's one of those weird vibes again of like, I feel like our common, so our common writer is supposed to be known in this world again. Like, do people well, he, know what? Like when he brings it, he mentions it in this episode, he's like, oh, it's the, it's the legendary writer, like the legendary fighter or something. Like he references it as in like, there have been rumors of this, but like, I can't believe it's real. Kind of, kind of a deal. Okay, yeah, because it was just one of those weird moments where I was trying to figure out if we're pretending that, like, because obviously with the other shows and like some of the movies we watch, like, oh, everyone knows Common Riders, all oh, everyone knows Super Sentai in this world, everyone knows this, but like Geats always did the the world wipes, so no one really knew. Uh, this one does when you see chemis, they wipe you, which is kind of the same vibe, but like. Maybe they know what a common rider is, but they just don't know about chemis or it seems like this this world, like the Gotchard world, um, doesn't really know what common riders are. Um, outs outside of outside of like the the Gotchard writer himself and how 
uh, how good they've been doing at wiping minds, I guess. Because if you remember in the Kamen Rider Legends special, at one point, Hotaro is like, there are other Kamen Riders? Like when, oh, when yeah. they show the other cards, he's like, there are other Kamen Riders? So he certainly d- didn't know about any others. So I would assume that that's true of like the world that he's from. But yeah, it is hard to tell sometimes because definitely Kajiki has uh, some knowledge of the fact that a common writer exists. I'm assuming from, of course, his, you know, extensive <laughs> occult research, research that he's doing. Yeah. Uh, but he, he doesn't know much about him, clearly. Like he doesn't know his name. He just knows he's like some sort of like legendary fighter and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the kids decide that so Hijiri Hijiri is like watching all this go on and she's like clearly like she's a, a little like struck by this because her brother's you know uh, a, a murdering monster now <laughs> <laughs> he's on the outside uh, but he was on the inside <laughs> exactly they decide that maybe a fire truck Kemi could put out all these flames uh, so they start start looking for one of those and then great moment here Kajiki yells Ganbare Kamen Rider. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and fills ho- fills hotaro with fighting spirit toby that's, that's what he needed to... he says geez i get it <laughs> which i liked a lot uh they finally discover the uh the combo that's needed for putting out the flames and it is uh what uh he 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 gets like a like a rescue uh type situation and flay rose um pairing those two up when he transforms he becomes basically a common writer with big water spigot hands. He can kind of like propel himself around with those. He also has like vines and thorns sticking out of his body from the rose side. So he can like, he can like zip line on, on vines while spraying from his spigot hands. And he does that to put, put the fire out. Yeah. Uh, there, there, I- there's a lot of weirdness trying to tie those two items together and making it work. <laughs> because even like his the finisher was he somehow made like a a million rose petals just like yeah. fill the air and did a crazy water kick to like slice through them and kill the monster but i know they have to make combinations of things in the show like <laughs> the, the, like this one in particular uh motorcycle crab sure i guess that kind of works and it's okay but if all things to say like we're gonna make these two things combine somewhere down the road I feel like a fire truck and a rose is really just like the wildest combination you could have pulled out of a hat. It is a little strange with those two. I will say in practice, I thought that the, I thought it was pretty clever, like their combo that they came up with for the putting of the fire. And I thought the, I thought the roses clouding out the whole scene was so cool looking. Um, So I'm okay with this one, but you're totally right. It is such a weird combo. It doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Um, and I guess none of them have really made a ton of sense, right? We had, um, we had what like samurai fighter and skateboard. <laughs> that was a combination before. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they're they're all a little strange. We had this one, this one especially was just like, okay, so we've got the, we need to put the fires out, okay, and then also there's a rose here, okay, all right. Uh, I guess we're working work. some angles. Let's let's get yeah. some stuff going. <laughs> let them cook. Let them cook. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he he does the big finish here. And of course, we get a big uh, rider kick finish. We think we've won, but the the card doesn't come over to the common rider. He doesn't doesn't get in the Kemi card. Instead, Toby, it goes to Hajiri, and she transforms. She transforms in the best way possible too, because she does the fantastic horror movie thing of her eyes black out and she cries like black blood, yeah. hatred, evil tears. And I was like, this is so fucking good now. That was insane. I can't believe that they actually like did the full on like crying blood tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she she full on is uh, ready to, to <laughs> murder her brother. <laughs> um, the alchemist teacher steps in, tries to fight her back. Uh, the alchemy kids try to help out. They she like melts their rings. I think which I thought was happens. awesome. Yeah, they definitely do because at some point they get new ones down the road during the fight. But I was like, you would think in like a show like this or in most medias that do like the, we'll call it sci-fi. Like if you have your special power ring, it feels like the rings are like a belt or a buckle or whatever you want to call it. Like, 
I feel like they're usually indestructible or they're not an easily breakable object. And this is pretty early in the season. And some Kemi's like, hey, here's a bunch of lightning. And all the kids yeah. are like, hey, my fucking ring melted. I can't do anything now. <laughs> yeah, the, it seems pretty early to be like having equipment malfunctions. <laughs> yeah, you should be facing tougher Kemi's before that happens, I feel like. <laughs> totally. I thought it was cool, though. And it was kind of it gave them a neat opportunity to have to forge new rings like in the middle of battle, which was cool, too. Like they literally had to do alchemy to fix their alchemy yeah. rings. <laughs> I said, no, it's uh, good. It was kind of kind of neat too that clearly only the teacher was like strong enough at at alchemy to do that without the ring. I thought that that was a, a little neat touch. Like, okay, he can handle fixing the rings, but clearly like the other kids can't. Yeah. Uh, then the common writer, of course, basically uh, sacrifices himself for the arsonist brother. He gets in the way. We do the big thing of like, why would you do that? I'm like, well, you know. He's still a person. I, I I still believe in people. Kind of kind <laughs> of the vibe. Um, and then the teacher realizes, like, oh, he doesn't just believe in the heart of the chemis. He believes in the heart of persons. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a he's a good he's a good dude. That Hodoro. He's uh he's cut from a good cloth. And that's the the first of the the secondary hallmark moments. Where Kudo makes the face like, you know what? Maybe I can like this guy. Maybe he's even better than I thought because she gets all dreamy and starry eyed and everything else. And she does a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he stands there. He tea takes it forever. Uh, he's just going to like continue to let Hajiri attack him over and over again. He's not going to he's not going to murder her, <coughs> which, you know, I feel like he should he should be an equal opportunity fighter. He should have fought her just as much as he did her, her brother, but he decides not to. Um. And then they realize, Toby, that uh, Kijiki is the only person who can help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, because Hodora understands the heart of people, he knows this. And he yells, he yells, Ganbare back to Kijiki. I love that he got to return the favor. Um, and he says, this is your fateful encounter, remember? And then Kijiki realizes that Hodoro is Kamen Rider. thought that was a cool little moment. And of course, like, so that, that start, that we, that, that's when we start running into the... But we know what's happening at the end of this in re- in regards of who knows what and everything. Yep. <laughs> uh, but right, so right before they would finish the fight in this part, like before this moment, uh, I'm growing on uh, Pokedex, Pokedex Isaac, where like they're in the battle and like the little robot voice says like, oh, it's an electric. It, it's weak to this. Uh, this outfit can soak up electricity <laughs> because it has tuning uh, lightning rods built into it. And the dumb Pokemon... The Pokemon vibe of this growing into it more is pretty fun to me. I also like that that Isaac knows knows all this, and then someone's like, "Well, how do you think Hodoro knew that?" And Isaac's like, "No, I think he just I think he just did it, and it worked out." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny too. It was like, uh, "No, he just got very lucky that this happened." <laughs> uh, Kajiki, of course, you know, steals his resolve. He walks in towards Hijiri. He's dodging lightning that's firing everywhere. Um, the alchemists are back in the action at this point. There's this huge electricity explosion. While Kajiki's getting in close, uh, all the alchemists are uh, uh, they they all they all summon swords from all over town. They bring them and they form this big like electrical dispersion grid, which I thought was the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, it was actually like cool. Well, it was crazy to me because then reflecting back. You would think if it was an amusement park where all the samurais and stuff were at, they wouldn't wouldn't give them actual metal swords. (laughs) Yeah. But when all the swords went in the air and sucked up all the electricity and like blasted them on the power lines, I was like, holy shit, they're actually real swords you're playing with. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like that, aside from like ignoring that fact that yes, they clearly wouldn't have like real swords, I don't think. Um, I I guess they could be real swords, but just like not sharp, right? They could just be metal, but blunt. I don't know. Uh, but it was still a really cool scene. Like I loved that that use, and like what a cool way to involve the alchemist crew without them having like direct fighting. You know, yeah. Like again, uh, like they, they do their they do their part just a little bit different. Uh, yeah, and they even did cool. the they did a very soft piano version of the theme song, and I, I was like, <laughs> I was super into it. I was like, I would listen to this for real, hundred percent. Like it just sounds so good, even as a mellow piano ballad kind of thing. Yeah, it was super good. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. 
Uh, and then, of course, finally, Kajiki makes it up to Hajiri. He tells her, basically, like, don't throw your memories of joy away. Uh, and then he, like, holds up the magazine. Like, remember, we, we wrote into the magazine together. And then, he like, they read um, a passage from both of their letters. And both of them said, like, if my article gets published, I promise to always believe in the world of the fantastic. Yeah, and... they, went, they went to the upside down, like Stranger Things. <laughs> they did. <laughs> They really did, yeah. And there was even, like, obviously it's to make funny special graphics to go along with the vibe. But they have both of their character, like, the characters of the words they wrote in their own colored fonts of the kanji, I guess. Yeah. And as they're talking, like, both colors merge together to show, like, where the words overlapped. Of, like, look, we're supposed to be the, we're, we're, we're like, one. We're supposed to be the same. and that was kind of cool and i'm assuming the way that the overlap happened on screen visually it looked like it was like they said the same things but maybe like slightly different wording which i thought was cool so because yeah, like, like there was only because like there's four or five specific characters by themselves that didn't like line up at the end but yeah. the vibe was obviously the same from both of them where at least the main line of i promise to always believe was definitely written by both of them. Yeah, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, so, of course, that wins out. Hajiri gets taken out. Uh, Hodoro shields Kajiki from the big blast, and then the Kemi card finally comes over to Hodoro, and that's where we find out, uh, that's where we get the Raidenji card. So, uh, Kajiki saved the day, basically, is what, what <laughs> happened here. The cops come, and uh, the brother is getting arrested again, but before he kind of um, gets taken away, he does tell his sister that he saw the the, hit, the, hit, the Hitodama as well. He saw the kind of spirits of the family. So he uh, kind of reels back the I want to murder you and also everything that you care about <laughs> vibe yeah. that he was giving her earlier. So I, I just did a Google Lens on my phone to translate their little art, their little things. Uh-huh. So it does it, it does okay. Japanese translation, I guess, all things considered. I think so, yeah. Uh, his says... This article was published in a magazine. If it were to publish, it would be a strange world. And for the rest of my life, that means it really exists. And I believe. And hers says something strange will happen, exists. And if it appears in a magazine for the rest of my life, it really will. I do believe something, something. So basically, like, it's obviously it's very broken English translations, but they definitely have almost the same exact words in both of theirs of what they have on the screen there. So those are probably obviously the parts that overlap then. Yeah. That's cool. I I love that you know it's it's a fun way to like end a common writer battle, which is which is different and unique that isn't just a writer kick and and yeah I love the visual representation and stuff of that. Very cool. Of course, we've come to the end of the episode now, Toby. So now where we really get to tug on some heartstrings. Um, Hodoro yep, asks uh, the classic dilemma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the classic dilemma of do we just ruin all these people lot people's lives now by erasing their memories. Hodoro asks the the teacher Minato to not erase their memories uh, because, of course, these two have like found each other. They've gone through this horrible trial now together, and uh, the teacher says he'll give them thirty minutes. <laughs> That's <laughs> I, nice. One. I wrote down what the fuck, Minato. <laughs> so uh, Hijiri and Kijiki uh, go spend their last thirty minutes together. They go off. They go to the uh, the temple, which was at the very beginning of the last episode where the UFO sighting happened. And they see the freaking UFO <laughs> in the sky. And I wrote down in all caps, they see the UFO, but they'll never remember. Why does this show do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was so angry at this moment. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll let the, the episode finish and then I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll give my same vibe of that statement. Sure. So they drop like the, the, the 30 minute mark happens. They sort of like drop hands. They look like they don't know each other and they kind of wander off, like kind of a little confused. And turns out the UFO in the sky was actually the number 10 Kemi that we heard about last episode. The Abyssal Sister grabs it and it's UFO X. So we'll definitely be seeing more about UFO X in the future. We start to end the episode. Kajiki again feels like he's forgetting something. He likes to mention that whenever his memory gets wiped. <laughs> I feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, poor guy. And it just as we think it's about to end with them not being connected or whatever, um, they start to walk at each other like they, hey, hey, suddenly they're going to pass. It's going to be a fateful encounter. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be a real hallmark. Yep. 
they brush past each other and there's no reaction. Uh, so then, of course, Hodoro looks over at Kudo and he looks super sad. And it's like, Kemi Law, no exceptions. That's how it works. But even she looks sad. Like the big, the big part of all of this, even from like the last episode, we gave her tons of credit. Like they're both good wing people. Like she seems just as bothered by all the the non romantic parts that she has to keep reinforcing yes. as much as like Hodoro does for his friend. Like she seems her her vibe in most of this, like when she smiled about Hodoro like having the the heart of like the heart of the cards to make the dumb like Yu Gi Oh joke, like it seems like she's recognizing a lot of the more human traits that people would have versus just like the I guess we'll call it science class traits or like the, this is a business, <laughs> this is a job, this is a calling kind of traits. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cause when she has to like reinforce, like, well, it's Kimmy law. There's no exceptions. Like, yeah, she looks genuinely sad. Um, so yeah, I think she's, I think she's like coming around to, to Hodoro's way <laughs> for sure. She's softening a little bit, <laughs> but of course, Toby, as the two uh, have passed, um, uh, so, so Gajiki had his, a cult magazine in his hand. Hajiri stops after she's maybe like 10 feet past him. She turns around and she's like, uh, that magazine. I love that magazine. And then they, <laughs> they have their fateful re-encounter. So they, they have the exact same basically conversation they had the first time around. Like, Oh my gosh, I'm in this episode, this, this, this issue. Well, what you're in this issue. I'm in this issue. <laughs> they hit it off just like they did before. And, uh, and they send us home. They send us home happy, which was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to, where the hell is it? So here is, you can use this picture so that people can see. But this is the picture of Akuto's face when they get together. So she's actually like real life happy or like real life actors happy. Like she's like, oh shit, this is actually work still. This can be done. Like people have more soul than I give them credit for. Uh, So my question with the brain wiping specifically to this episode, uh, Hajiki and his now possible girlfriend, they met way before all the common rider adjacent shit started happening. Why did they have to mind wipe them back to that so far back where they didn't even know each other? Well, they, cause didn't he see Hopper one, like right before the moment that he met her? So, so I think that was probably Monado just being like, nope, we're just not going to let you remember anything. <laughs> Cause like of all things, like it may, I, I don't know the science between behind how they wipe minds and everything else, but it seems like they could have went like five minutes past the point that they thought they had to. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. they could have still been together. Also, it really like, it really begs the question too, when they wipe some minds, like clearly like they wiped a good chunk of his, his time here. Like does, does he just lose that day? Like, the, <laughs> does he just not know what he did for like his entire field trip? Cause his entire field trip was dedicated to tracking down this woman. <laughs> yes. It's weird. The, yeah. the, the, uh, the mind wipe rules are not set very well. And it's, it's causing concern for me. I understand what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> I was, when I, when I thought that they were going to actually leave us with those two, not knowing each other, especially after we had such like a, a a very touching episode right like it was like he goes out on a limb for her they he rescues her from from her her malice it all works out everyone's happy everyone's had like a nice field trip i thought they were gonna end on that moment i'm just like well you know kemi law that's how it works <laughs> i was almost ready to be like fuck this show <laughs> like <laughs> i'm done uh so i'm glad that they Glad that they reeled that back in because they had they had so many of those moments leading up to this of just like bummer, heartstring ripping endings. <laughs> yeah, they keep they keep upsetting the people. So I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that the mind wipe stuff we we stop doing that soon. This was the very first time I think where that I recall where Hotaro was like, maybe let's just not do this. <laughs> <laughs> like I know I know he's like kind of complained about it a little bit before. But this this is my first memory, at least, of him just straight up asking Monado, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little so. more real than the other shit. Like, it's my best friend losing his his one chance at love. They were so happy. They found each other. Exactly. He's going to be like, fuck this all. The fateful encounter. Luckily, uh, Kajiki uh, still 
is going to hopefully uh, go all the way here with Hajiri <laughs> in his fateful re-encounter. I hope, those two... <laughs> I, say, I hope those two weirdos uh, love each other for a long time. Yeah, it all came back together. We're good now. Everyone's ha- everyone's going home happy. Uh, going home they are. Back uh, back leaving the field trip. Kyoto is uh, is no more. So that is uh, Common Rider episode ten. Toby, what are your what are your thoughts on the episode? They're I mean they're all fun. Uh, the yeah the the mind wiping dilemmas. Uh, I wasn't sure how many more times I could try to escalate the situation. I think this is another decent escalation of that situation. I think they do need to stop <laughs> at some point. Yeah, <laughs> making, making this the uh, the vibe every time. I mean, I, I get why, but it seems silly to me to keep doing this. I hope they do, especially because, like, especially Kajiki, because that poor boy has he feels like he's part of the Common Rider Alchemy crew, but every time he is part of the crew, he's got to get his freaking mind wiped when it happens. Like that is beginning to really suck. <laughs> poor guy. Um, but yeah, I hopefully hopefully we we stop doing that soon. But yeah, you know, I think I was looking at like uh, I was looking at some stats and stuff from like uh, our episodes like with Geats and then our episodes now. And it seems like people maybe aren't as into Gotchard. Like just the, there's it's it, the numbers are down. Let's say Joey. <laughs> just a little bit like it seems like there's less people out searching for Gotchard on the Internet, and like finding random hits and stuff from that. Um, which like, yeah, it is a very different show than, than Geats was, uh, and a little jarring at times because it's like, it's a a very different vibe, but like, it's super fun. And I, I definitely, it grows on me each week. And I realized this week that it's, it's doing such a good job of making me really like all the characters. Like, (laughs) cause yeah, we talked about my, my Kajiki love. Um, I love the the rest of the the alchemy kids. I think they're all great. Even Isaac had his like moment to shine on his tablet this time around. Uh, Kudo, like you were saying, is like you could tell really starting to to feel the human aspect here. Um, I think they're actually doing a really good job of like building everybody up, kind of at a a reasonable pace and making it all feel pretty pretty realistic. Yeah, like I think we made the I'll call it a joke, but it was more of a comment last week. Like the it, the whole thing this season is just way more like sli- a slice of life anime than I feel like Geats was. Like this is just like a happier, calmer. I would guess a different. They're looking for a different demographic this time around because, like, it's c- kind of a polar opposite of how Geats worked. Yeah, definitely. But it just seems like they want different people to watch it this time, and there's probably not a ton of overlap from last time necessarily that's probably helpful right like have you know especially in this world now where these shows you know kids aren't tuning in on saturday morning to to watch the brand new episode like all the time right like they're they're streaming the episodes on netflix and they're watching an entire season at a time and stuff like it probably makes a lot of sense to have some seasons that are aimed more at the like you know teenager ages like yeats where you know they can get into it and love it and then some seasons where it's aimed at like younger kids or, you know, just a different vibe, a different genre. So that way you can find the show that you care about, <laughs> even if it isn't necessarily like the one that is currently airing. So, yeah, I mean, as if you ha- if you're a show that has the luxury of radically changing season to season, like like Common Rider can, it probably makes a lot of sense to, to do that. Probably just to build out your uh, your repertoire <laughs> of yeah. streaming options, I would think. Uh, it certainly, yeah, it makes for a weird transition as someone is watching it season to season. But uh, you know, I think, I think it works. I, I think, I think, I think my reservations about Gotchard have mostly been uh, resolved at this point, and I'm, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It, it, it isn't Geats, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> I think is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, the the love triangle calmed down for a little bit, and now did. Yeah. kudos buying in a little more. So it'll be fine. Hopefully, <laughs> or hopefully, it should all be fine. All right. Uh, well, before we wrap up, let's uh, let's do a little self promotion, Toby. Yeah. Uh, we of course have a Patreon. We'd love for you all to check out. Uh, for just three bucks a month, you can get bonus content uh, where we uh, primarily are doing uh, watch and react shows where 
we watch an episode of an old Common Rider series. Right now we're watching through X-Aid. You get to see the show. You get to hear us talk about it. It's very mystery science theater, and it's a whole lot of fun to do. Uh, so you can sign up now. You get all of our Black Sun Watch and React and everything we've done for X-Aid so far. Uh, we're through about half that show so far. Um, and again, three bucks a month, huge, huge value, big bargain there. So patreon.com slash the comment writers to find that. Uh, you can also get an, into our discord from that and get uh, the occasional ramble cast that we put out as well, where we uh, just talk about random uh, non tokusatsu nonsense, uh, which is super fun. So check that out. Patreon.com slash the comment writers. So check that out or links in the description here uh, where you can find uh find where that is and of course send us in those emails we love getting emails from everyone out there uh that is cast at common writer sucks.com for the email address and of course toby where can the people find you on the great wide internet on twitter it's at life of tobes but i've slowed down my my amount of tweeting but every day still a new video game video at tobes plays on youtube Right now, Josh, I'm going through the whole Resident Evil verse, much like I did the whole Yakuza verse, much like I did the whole Kingdom Hearts verse. Nice, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, you're a you're a machine for going through these. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm working on uh, the first uh, the first Yakuza game still, but I have a weird thing on my PC now where it is um, my controller stops working until I Alt Tab out of the game and tab back in, Perfect. which is extremely annoying i need to figure that out so before i play more games uh for me you can find me pretty much all over uh at pretty Dece josh uh twitter and tumblr and uh threads are kind of the main three there uh but uh mostly on tumblr really at this point and of course on youtube at uh pretty Dece. so you can just search for that or go to youtube.com slash pretty Dece, and you might be watching this video there right now uh, all right, so that's going to wrap it up for us. That is going to wrap up episode 10 of Common Rider Gotcha Art for us as well. We'll be back next time to talk about episode 11, and we do hope that you join us back for that as well. But until then, have a great week, everybody. Peace. <laughs>